Lighting is important. It is literally the only thing your viewer sees on the image. Let's face it, the world is a dark place and the only reason we can see stuff is because light is bouncing off of it. Therefore, literally the only thing you can see is the lighting. It's a fact that bad lighting can ruin a good animation, as well as good lighting can fix a bad one. Lighting is definitely one of those skills you want to master if you want to be good at animation. So today I've got for you 9 tips on how you can spice up your lighting in my animator. Let's begin. Number one, you're watching my video so you can expect the first tip to be glowing surfaces. I absolutely love those things, they can really fix your animation. So as an example here, I've got this library set, I haven't really done any advanced lighting, I just put some lights in there, and the way I want to fix it is by simply importing a surface and giving it a texture. The texture is going to be this radial gradient from white to transparent, I'll put the download link for my lighting textures in the description because you're gonna need them. Pretty much apply the texture, throw the surface over your glowing objects or your lights, anything that emits light. It can even be off screen, it just wants some light to be visible in there. Just put the glowing surface on there, make it glow, only render glow, tweak the colors, and you've got your scene. Here's without this method, here's with this method. Again, I haven't done anything crazy with the lights, I just added some glowing surfaces. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's definitely an improvement. And as far as lighting goes, you want to pick those little improvements and throw them all together, and the end result is gonna be pretty much amazing, so... That's my tip number one. Number two, you'll hear people talking about this, I'm talking about bleed light. This is the option down on the graphics panel, and if you turn it off, it's pretty much gonna make your object brighter. It's hard to explain exactly what it does, but if you've got a cube that's illuminated from one side, and you turn on bleed light, the light is sort of going to bleed on the other faces, if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense for a grass block to use that, it's mostly sand and powder, you know, it, it sort of serves like a subsurface scattering sort of thing. Or human hair, like I've done with Oblivion before. There's a lot of examples how it looks with or without it. It's also a stylized thing, so if you want to use it, that's up to you. However, certain things look better with light bleed, because as I've said, it looks like subsurface scattering and it makes it just a little bit more Mwah. Tip number three, night lighting. Now, I want to say, first off, never do this. Don't do this. If you do this, I hate you, it's bad, <sighs> I'm salty. Instead, keep the daylight settings. Keep it day, but tweak the colors instead. So the sunlight is gonna be like a bright dark blue. You can see it on the screen, I'm not gonna explain. The ambient color are the shadows, those are gonna be a little bit more dark, you know, just, just put them down there. Same color, just darker, a little more saturated. We're gonna mimic the moonlight. Also, if you post your video on YouTube and it doesn't have much contrast, YouTube's gonna compress it even more. Trust me, I've made that mistake before, it doesn't look good. Next thing, you wanna add a sphere. You want to invert that sphere, go into the custom rotation point, put it to zero so it's in the center, lock it onto your main scenery, scale it up so it covers everything, and you should also give it a texture of a night sky. You can literally Google that stuff, it's everywhere, you can find it. It's like a sky replacement sort of thing. Turn off your clouds and add some fog to the scene. On the big sphere, turn off fog, SSAO, cast shadows, all that stuff. You can also put the brightness to 100 so the color is just as it should be. Play around with the fog, but because we've turned fog off the sky, it doesn't blend naturally, yeah? it, it needs some fog there. So what I want you to do is create a cube, give it a texture of the light ray, it's in the description. I'm, I'm talking about all the stuff that I've made, it's in the description, it's a useful thing. I also invert the cube, custom rotation point, twist it, turn it however you want, scale it up so it's covering the edges, turn off fog, cast shadows, all that stuff. Give it the same color as the fog, brightness 100%, now you can just scale it, it looks like it's the same fog all over your sky, it looks natural. And also if you want to go an extra you can add another cube, call it the moon, give it a moon texture, put it up on the sky, add another glowing surface, you know, we like those glowing surfaces, Mwah. put it up there, scale it, mess with the settings, only render glow, boom, you have a really beautiful night setting. If you want to go in depth, there's a YouTuber called Keep On Chucking, he also did a more detailed tutorial on this, and I think it looks pretty good, so if you want more info, you should check him out, he's a good YouTuber. While we're talking about Keep On Chucking, the tip number four is contrast and brightness. Pretty much what you want to do is go to your camera settings, turn on color correction, put the contrast to 100%, put the brightness to 50%, and then lower down the sky and the ambient color of the clouds and everything else so it's not too bright. This is a tip from Keep On Chucking, which I can give full credit to, that's completely his thing. Again, you should check out his channel, he's got some pretty quality stuff there. Because of all the extra contrast, the lights come to expression that much better, so you can see them more, they pop all that better. So yeah, looks pretty good. Tip number five, this is a professional rule in cinematography, use motivated light. A motivated light is something which is on the screen, perhaps even behind the character, but it's still casting the light onto the character. So if there's a campfire down at the back, and if you add a light to it, it doesn't really illuminate the character, but the trick is to add another spotlight, which does 
does shine onto the character. If we're reasonable, it makes absolutely no sense for the spotlight to just be floating in the air like that. Like, there's no light there. But from a context standpoint, it looks good. It looks like the campfire is casting the light onto the character, even though it's not actually doing that. But by adding that extra spotlight, it looks like it is, and it looks way better than before. This is without, this is with. If you want to go the extra mile, add another spotlight up the top to diffuse the shadows. Add another blue spotlight on the other side, so it looks like there's moonlight shining on him. Boom, you got yourself a nice little render, and it's quick and it's easy. More red lights are used in Hollywood all the time, and it's really one of those big boy tips that I can give you, so I do recommend you look into it. Tip number six, shoot on the shaded side of your object. Pretty much what I'm saying is shoot towards the light. This is also a rule in cinematography. A lot of professional filmmakers use that to their advantage. For example, there's a light in the back of your character. You should always shoot the face on the side that has the shadow. You can see it here, it looks cinematic. If I turn the camera around, I mean, the lighting is set up well, but something is missing. There's no cinematic aspect to it. Shoot on the shaded side, AKA shoot towards the light, not with it. Tip number seven, fog. Keep the distance high, just increase the size so it's really small, really gradual. That's it. Like, that's all you gotta do. Environment, right? The atmosphere, it has particles. Fog. It looks way better. Use fog. Trust me, use fog. Tip number eight, color contrast. Not only can you contrast shadows and highlights, you can also contrast colors. I might have talked about this thing before, the color wheel. The colors on the opposite sides have the greatest color contrast. For example, red and green or blue and orange, or purple and yellow. Use that to your advantage. I got this little scene on the bridge here. It's pretty cold, I've got the cold moonlight from the better night lighting tips. Cold moonlight, but there's a warm light with our character and it looks so much better. I'm even gonna add some glowing surfaces. Boosh, look at this. Once again, not much effort, but it looks really good. You got the warm tones here, we got the cold tones in the background. Color contrast just brings it all out, right? It gives way more attention to the character than to the background. It doesn't need to be orange and blue, it can be literally any contrast. I just like orange and blue the most, so I picked it in the example. Get creative. And finally, tip number nine, light bounce. In the real world, if you shine a light onto a colorful object, let me just try to mimic this. This white light here, I shine it onto the purple headphones and I'm guessing it's reflecting like a purple tone back onto my skin. I'm not sure because I can't see myself, but that's usually the case because light scatters and light bounces. So if you shine a strong light onto a bright red surface, that red is gonna get reflected on the surroundings. So if you wanna spice up your scene just a little bit, you should add colorful lights to different colorful surfaces, such as flowers, walls, carpets. Once again, this is something that keep on chucking money into detail in this video. He also had a really pretty example to show. So I recommend you check out his channel. The link is in the description. He's doing a good job. You should show him support and all that stuff. And a little extra tip at the end, tip number 10, treat every frame of your video like a render, like a wallpaper. Treat it like this is wallpaper, final result. So there's this random shot in your video. So if it doesn't look wallpaper worthy, then that scene is not good. Every single scene, every shot, every time the camera changes, it needs to be wallpaper quality. All these tips I was talking about for the past whole video, apply them to your shots until they look as good as a wallpaper. That's what you need. Now these are all the tips that I'm gonna give you, and now it's time for a little challenge. My challenge is to light this scene. Let me just import my character. First of all, I'm gonna position my camera, try to use some rule of thirds, right? So it's on the third, like, little, nice, nice little composition there. Fingers are just a pain to pose, that's all they are. Just wanna give them an interesting expression on the face, right? This is a lighting tutorial, I'm not gonna talk about what I'm doing right here. Okay, so first things first, go into my camera, turn on color correction, put the contrast to 100, put the brightness to 50. Cause I'm gonna be working with these colors now, I gotta do this first, otherwise I'm gonna have to adjust everything. Sunlight, I'm gonna make this into a nice Night scene, so this is gonna be my sunlight. My ambient color is gonna be really dark. I'm gonna tilt it slightly, so it gives a little bit more dynamic shadows on the building. Uh, now what I gotta do is add a sphere, invert it, call it sky, parent it onto the piece of scenery. Custom rotation point zero, give it a texture. Cold night one's gonna do, oh no, I've lost it. It's somewhere down at the bottom right here. Scale it up, turn off shadows, SSAO fog, delete the clouds. I wanna use my selective glow pack that I just made a video on because I want to isolate all the glowing blocks from the non-glowing ones. Resource packs take a while to get uploaded because there's like 900 textures for each texture pack and it's 
yeah, it's it's not fun. Call this one glow. I don't think I need a slight glow. I'm just gonna put the brightness all the way up. Oh, it stopped rendering. Then I'm gonna make it glow. Now I can change the glow radius and fall off and all that stuff. Then of course you gotta light your background. So I'm gonna add some lights in there. And they have to be point lights because they're positioned in 3D space. Oh yeah, also glow can not cast shadows. I'm also gonna turn off fog, because why not? Now because we've got the brightness and contrast trick, this is gonna be overblown. So I wanna put the color down and refresh this. Still too bright. And now the sunlight feels too bright. Oh, sunlight strength. Yeah, that's way better. That's way better. I want to duplicate this color here of the light, add a spotlight. And this spotlight here is going to be the motivated light for our character. Size, radius, sharpness, so it's very smooth. Give it the same color. This should go further back. So it's not just around the head, but it's actually covering most of the body. Now the glowing surfaces, this part usually looks the best. I'm not even renaming anything, I'm just throwing it in. I got this tint texture, which is from the face ring. I'm just gonna use that because it's essentially the same texture. And I can just place it here. Maybe it's gonna go on the X a little bit. So it's like this. Glow and only render glow. And the glow color is gonna be slightly orange-ish. Put it down. No, the glow color is very, very sensitive. So you gotta be very careful when you use this. So yeah, that looks good. That looks pretty good. Duplicate this surface and now turn off only the glow so you can see where it is. Is. Put it down and now back to only render glow. So now it looks like it's actually glowing. Look at this, it looks so much better just by adding the glowing surfaces. It's it's crazy. Now duplicate this glowing surface and I want to position it pretty close to our character, if not even over our character. Scale it up. I think this will do, but the glow color, uh, moonlight color. Only render glow if I do this now. Yeah, that's too much, right? So let's uh, let's be a little bit more careful with this. Lots of trial and error, my friends. Maybe the ambient colors are not dark enough. Now I think Oblivion here needs another spotlight, except it's gonna be from the other side, and it's gonna be stronger, and it's gonna be moonlight, because the moonlight is not emphasized on him enough, and he's not separated from the background enough. Now he feels like he's lit by the moonlight, however his face is now a little bit too dark. Select these two glowing surfaces right here, put the alpha down, maybe this spotlight here could also cover a bit of his face. Yeah, this feels better. Now just drop it down, play with it so you get rid of all the natural the shadows because my mirror likes to add these random shadows on the face this is just lights being glitchy actually i could just increase the point light spotlight buffer size to very big like this this feels like a pretty cinematic thing right I, at least in my opinion this arm here is getting affected by the spotlight and i don't like it so and i'm just searching for the middle ground where the saturation is just right just small tweaks like I've said, look, we could do with one more thing. First of all, depth of field, obviously. I want to decrease it just a little bit, just so it's there, because it feels pretty nice. Should we use bloom? Do we even need it? No, I'm not going to use it. Camera crashed. I've added a bunch of color burn, just a little bit, tiny hint. As you can see it on the roof here, we ended up with this render right here. Without the use of Photoshop, this is 100% my animator. Also, if you want to go into the extreme, just like one last final touch, because I feel like this image would really look pretty nice with it duplicate this change the scale to 111 maybe scale it down even more and not only render glow now if i scale it down even more i think 0.9 does the trick and now duplicate it scatter it somewhere else duplicate it scatter it somewhere else little tiny fireflies what if i just not only render glow select all of them scale it down even more not make it only render glow okay yeah it feels better maybe scale it down more this is the final render no photoshop i'm happy with, with uh, how this looks like and all i did was use the tips that i showed you in this video hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys learned a thing or two i'm using it right here you can see what i came up with it and yeah i'm pretty happy how it turned out i also want to give a quick shout out to all the fan art that i've been getting in my discord server thank you guys i do appreciate it a lot it feels pretty great thank you for the effort please consider dropping a like hitting the the bell you know all that stuff and with that on the side i'll see you next time stay sharp